Okay, I found the problem and I accidentally stopped recording and started again. So there's going to be two videos for this one. Uh, basically, I just made a spelling mistake. I called this JSPYS and it just spelled it wrong. Um, so I'm giving the name of the folder JS Psych. I'm giving the name of the dist folder and I'm giving the name of the jspsych.js file to load. And when I did that correctly, I'm, I'm able to reload the experiment. I want to change this for each of these here. And so we'll do jspsych dist and then go straight to the plugin that we're looking for. So plugin, HTML, keyboard response. There it is. We don't need the at 1.12. That's just for the web server. And plugin preload. Do we do need dot js? We should again be able to. This one here, do we have a CSS folder? Yeah, the CSS is right here. So we're just making sure. Yeah, so it looks something like this. These, this is the local folder with dist, and then we're looking to the appropriate files. Uh, if I reload, the experiment's still working. So great. What this means is a whole bunch of things. Like let's say you want to later try a totally different plugin we'll do an example later um, but you would be able to add one of these in here maybe you want to do the plugin image slider response and you could simply add that in plugin image instead of keyboard it's a slider response and now you'd be able to use that one at the moment i'll delete that we can only use these two so what's next? Next, we see a variety of var statements, var, 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 many of those. That is short for declaring JavaScript objects. And there's a few comments here. Uh, anything in between a slash star is a comment or information and it's not run as JavaScript. And the comments are really helpful to see what the piece of code is supposed to be doing. Um, this is a component of the library. We create a JS psych object, and we can actually see that over here. If we type JS psych, this is the object that's created. And uh, it has, uh, some things in it. The library itself, we're creating it with something called the init JS psych function. This is part of the JS psych library. We could learn about that function by going to JS psych. Uh, let me see if I could find it. Do a search and start typing init JS psych. There it is. So for any of the functions that are JS psych function, you can go to the website and learn more about this function. Basically, this is a, a function to uh, initialize a whole bunch of settings for the experiment. And also it initializes JS psych. The, the thing that's added in here is something called an on finish property or parameter. Many of the plugins in JS Psych have this. There's also, um, so here it is on finish, on trial start, on trial finish. In this case, on finish occurs at the very end of the experiment. And um, when the very end of the experiment happens, you can write a function to, to do something at that point in time. What's neat about this is the function can be anything. Whatever you wanna have happen at the end, you can make happen here. 
For example, if you want to display the data, which is what happened at the end of the experiment, we can use uh, a custom function from JS Psych to do that. But we could do other things too, if we wanted. Uh, if I wanted to do console log one plus one, at the very end of the experiment, uh, I'm not sure this will happen. It's not really worth showing, but if, if we ran through the experiment, um, I'll just do it really fast. What should happen is we'll see the data up here, but we'll also see one plus one entered into the console because I asked that to happen as well as part of the function. So there the two got entered. So this is a very general thing. But all JS psych experiments will start with this. The next thing we have to do is create what's called a timeline. And all of this is is a, a simple JavaScript line that uh, is called timeline. You could call it whatever you want, but JS psych is looking for something special that's called timeline. Uh, the two square brackets make a empty array. So if I was to make an empty array over here like this, just without calling it timeline, I make a variable, it has a name and it has an array type. And arrays are very interesting because you can put all sorts of things in them. And, and uh, the array called timeline that we run it's going to, you know, we could put it over here. It's later going to contain uh, JavaScript objects for every single trial or every single thing that happens in the experiment. This next part's really handy. It's called uh, a preload. Many times you will have uh, media assets such as images and um, in psychology experiments, we may want to be able to present these images onto the screen uh, whenever we want with minimal delay. If you had a big image and someone out there on the internet was accessing your experiment, and part of the experiment was to show that image on the screen, one thing that has to happen is that image needs to get downloaded to their computer before it can be displayed. And uh, the download time could be very long and uh, hard to uh, control. How, however, it's possible to preload media and have it download before and have it uh, put into the, the cache of the browser so that when, and held in memory so that you can display it really quickly. So we see an example of doing that here. It's another JavaScript variable. In this case, it's a JavaScript object. Uh, if I said B equals and then curly braces, we get something different. It's not an array. It's an object. And um, objects can have individual properties. So this uh, JSIC adopts this structure and individual plugins have specific properties. The first thing you do is tell, uh, is identify the type property and uh, say what plugin you're using. You go find the JS Psych preload. Are you finding that? Media preloading. Give some examples. Um, it's one of these plugins here. This is something that we are able to use because we loaded it up here. Uh, example usage is simply to list the images that you want to preload. In our case, uh, we have to have an images property here followed by an array that is identifying the file location of each image. So for us, the two images are in this folder IMG, 
and they're being when we when we reload the experiment at the beginning, all these images are downloaded and preloaded into the browser so they can be displayed quickly. Um, all right. So the next thing that happens here, if we were just to do it in a row, we can take that timeline. We're going to make the preload object. All this stuff happens in the background when I press reload. I'm just doing it one at a time. And I'm going to run this piece, timeline.push preload. And what this does is it takes the preload object and adds it into the timeline array. So now when we look at timeline, it's actually got something in it. It's got a object type preload plugin. That's the first thing in there. What we're about to do is systematically place uh, different kinds of trials into the timeline one at a time. When we reload the experiment, what do we see first? It's a message, welcome to the experiment, press any key to begin. Well, this is actually uh, in the timeline. Can we see the timeline here? Timeline, let's see if we can see the, not the zero, the, uh, the zero thing is this preload, but what is the first thing? Uh, we could see it's a uh, class HTML keyboard response plugin with a stimulus. Welcome to the experiment. Press any key to begin. And that's right here. So uh, in the code, we create a an, an, uh, JavaScript object. We're setting the type to JS psych HTML keyboard response. And that is loaded right up here. I want to note an inconsistency. Uh, the name of the plugin in the JavaScript file is all lowercase, and it's separated by dashes. However, when you write the name of the plugin in the type parameter, the syntax changes slightly. This is, I, I think this might be called camel case, or I'm not sure, but there's no more dashes. Lowercase j, and then each word gets an uppercase, psych HTML keyboard response. That's the pattern. This is a a uh, really amazing plugin that can do a lot of things we'll learn about later. There's another nice example down here, but for now it's super simple. Uh, we give it a stimulus and that's it. We define it and then push it to the timeline. Now it's, uh, and now it's there, we can see it. So when this part of the experiment comes up, what is happening is the stimulus is being displayed right here. And it's just waiting for a response. And so we can click the button to continue. And now we're on to the next thing that's being placed into the timeline. We can see the next thing here. It's a, a var called instructions. And again, this is a JavaScript object. It is, its type is JS psych HTML keyboard response, the same as the one above. And look at the stimulus here. This is kind of hard to see. There's a back tick and it closes with a back tick. And this allows you to write uh, a bunch of text. Notice this text is, it's HTML, isn't it? We've got a paragraph element, um, and that is displayed over here in this circle. Uh, in this experiment, circle will appear in the center of the screen. But another paragraph element, and we're using the strong for to create emphasis, and it makes a bolded word, and so on. There's divs that are being used. There's images that are 
being used. So this is a, a whole big amount of HTML. And it is, this is what it looks like when it renders in a web page. And we're using this to display some instructions and have people press the key to begin. All right, and when we press the key to begin, we're now taken through a series of trials, one at a time. So the next part is, uh, is actually quite interesting how it happens here. And it involves several steps together. One thing that happens is a JavaScript array is defined this one here looks like this. And it contains, uh, in this case, two JavaScript objects. So if we were to start looking at test stimuli, we could see that it's an array. We could see that there's two things in it. The zero, the zero thing is this object. And the first thing is this other object. Each object, I wonder if I can, um, is it going to, no. This is where, oh, yeah, no, stimulus. That's one of the things. So the stimulus property of the object inside the zero location is the name of an image. And uh, there's another property called correct response. And that's the keyboard response we want for that image. So uh, this is a little holding variable that will be used later. One of the things that happens in this experiment is that cross pops up and uh, that's the beginning of a trial. So how do you make that happen? We're doing that here with a, another um, HTML or keyboard response plugin. The stimulus in this case is something that's gonna produce just a plus. There's the plus right here. We've got these divs, and that just helps us give a, a style parameter to. So this is basically saying make the plus 60 pixels. If we said 200 here, then we should see a really big, uh, really big plus sign. And if we said, uh, you know, 10, it's going to be much smaller. So that's controlling the size of the plus sign. We're starting to see more options that we have for the plugin. Now, if you were to go find the plugin for this, uh, let's see. HTML keyboard response. These are all the extra parameters. Uh, so let me just line it up. It's this part is the name of the plugin. This part is right here. It's the string to be displayed. I can maybe make this a bit bigger. Choices. This is an array of possible buttons to press. And there's other options too. You can put no keys. And what that means is that while the stimulus is being presented, pressing a button won't do anything, it'll get blocked. And that's what we want to have happen when the plus sign is appearing there. We don't want people to click a button and have it disappear. Another feature is called trial duration. And we have that uh, as an option. It says how long to wait for the participant to make a response before ending the trial. So consider that we're putting a plus sign on there. We're not allowing people to make a response. Uh, so when will the trial end? When will the plus sign disappear? What's happening 
in this case is uh, the duration of the trial is actually being randomly sampled. This is a neat function. I think we should be able to try it out by putting it in here. And look, every time we run this, we're getting a different number. And so this is a way to make the presence of the fixation cross have a random duration on every trial. So every time this gets uh, implemented, this function will run and we'll pick a new number. If you didn't want it to be random, we would have to change this function. Uh, another thing that's happening here is a data property is being defined. We see that there is, um, should be, Wait a minute. Got to look carefully here. Yeah, it looks like there's a data type here, and it's going to save information that this is a fixation trial. I'm assuming what that means is that that's going to appear later in the data. OK, so we've got the plus sign. The next part is to get this image to appear on each trial, either the blue circle or the orange circle. We're doing that with something called the JSIC image keyboard response plugin. That's loaded right here. And it has a stimulus parameter. What's, what's important to notice is that Instead of saying the name of an image file, what we're doing is we're saying, go find the JS psych timeline variable and identify a stimulus item from that variable. I'm not sure we've got this far yet. We, we will momentarily, it's actually connected to down here. So th this is where things aren't as linear. Um, we have made a blank timeline up here. We've been adding to it. This, ad this preloads the images. This makes the welcome message at the beginning. This makes the instructions. We haven't yet added anything new to the timeline, but we're, we're making a few components. This variable contains the stimulus names of both images. Now, um, this is the plugin that makes the images. This part right here is going to be our next push into the timeline. We're creating an object that um, has a kind of like a little timeline in itself. So that it says timeline here. And this variable is saying for each trial, do the fixation plugin, then do the test plugin. This is the fixation plugin. That's going to do the cross and then for a random amount of time. And then what happens next, it's going to do the test plugin. Okay. Fixation, then test. Here we get to define something called a timeline variable, which we are giving, we're connecting this uh, to this object with the two stimuli names in it. And what this means is when 
uh, we go from the fixation, run the fixation plugin, and then run the test plugin, it will go and find one of the stimuli from here and display it. We're giving it the choices for the keyboard buttons of F and J. We're going to save some data. And um, there's a way at the end of each trial to do a comparison to basically compare whether the button that was pressed was the correct button to be pressed and record that. Here we have, uh, just to say a little bit more, um, a few ways to control what happens over many trials. Repetitions tells us uh, how many times to repeat this thing and whether or not to randomize the order. So I believe this will make 10 total trials and the order, whether it's blue or orange, is going to be randomly determined. And push that to the timeline. At the very end of the experiment, there remember we saw the data. That is another uh, JS Psych plugin called JS Psych HTML Keyboard Response, and uh, it does some things in order to produce the output that you saw. That gets pushed to the timeline. So we've created this timeline with all of these events. We can, uh, if I reload the experiment, you can you can look at the timeline. It's got all those things. Um, let's inspect them. The first one preloads the images. The second one makes this welcome message. The this one shows the instructions. The third one is uh, running the experiment, all the trials, and the last one is doing uh, feedback about performance. At the very end of your code, you run the jspsych.run timeline. And it starts everything off. OK, so that's the walkthrough. Let's do one more thing. This will be uh, an example of how you could start messing around with plugins yourself to get a, a hang of making things happen here. So how about we, what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna copy this and call it some tests, our plugin tests, how about that? So I've got my own plugin tests, and I delete that. And I'm going to leave some of this stuff the same. Well, just for fun, what do I want to do here? Everything from timeline down, I'm just deleting all of this. So I'm loading some plugins, the same ones as before. We're doing the JS psych initialization stuff. We didn't change that. We are initializing the timeline. But here, this is where all the plugins were defined before. I just deleted them all. So there's nothing here that's going to happen. Let's uh, it's going to run this in the browser. We get a yeah, we get some message here. No trials have been added to the timeline. The timeline is empty. Cannot start experiment. Great. So let's just mess around. Add something to the timeline. And 
uh, we should be able to try some of these demos just by going to find stuff. So HTML keyboard response, we've used that before. Let's um, see if we can add one and see what happens for, with a demo. Just, so let's copy this. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Creating a trial variable. It is a JS psych HTML keyboard response plugin. We've got that loaded. We've got a, a stimulus de description here. This is a HTML description. It's a P element. It's going to say the word blue, but it's going to have a, some style properties. So this will be 48 pixels font and the color green. There's three button press responses. And there also is a prompt we should see. Timeline dot push. We need to do this. We need to push that this thing to the timeline. So now that we've done uh, declared a plugin for a trial and actually pushed it to the timeline, we should be able to reload this. And now look at this. We get to see the stimulus. It's actually the word blue and green. And we could press a button and it will you know, record that. Uh, it'll give us the reaction time, what was presented and, and on and on. So you can have fun just trying stuff out like this and get a sense of what's happening. We wanted to do two trials. Let's just mess around. So trial, how about trial one? We'll call that one trial one. We'll call this one trial two. Let's make the color red and the word orange. You could push trial one, you could push trial two, saved, reload. Now we've got the first trial and we've got the second trial. Let's say you want to try another plugin just, just to start seeing what they look like and how they behave. You can keep adding them into the trial. Maybe an HTML slider response. Uh, could try some of this demo code grab it, pop it in here. I'll call this trial three and add it to the timeline like that. Let's see what happens. Uncut reference error. Right. This is not defined, this plugin. I wanted to try it out but I did not load it up here. So I have to do that. Let's copy one of these. And instead of an existing plugin, we need to find the one we want to load. So we're trying to do HTML slider response. HTML. slider response. That should load it for us so that when we reload this, we don't get a problem. And there's a, a an HTML display with a slider response that you can use and collect the data. All right. So have fun. Try messing around with different plugins and uh, see, see how that goes. We'll talk next week on Wednesday.